let's see, had um, uh, b- 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 Cape Hatteras in North Carolina had a um, 83, and that breaks the record set in 1928. And then in Florida, they were in the 80s and the 90s. This was a hot spot right here. That was in Naples, Florida. And then look at this. All these, these are high temperatures. Des Moines, Iowa came in with a 42 for a high. That's the coldest high they had for this date going back to 1901 when it was a 43. So as it flashes down through, you see a little bit of warm front starting to warm up a little bit behind it. Then you're going to have problems. The whole eastern part of the United States is going to be tough. Out here, nothing but sunshine for the whole west. And eventually, now, maybe by Wednesday, you start to get a little bit of cloudiness coming in. But here you have even snow coming into the Chicago area tomorrow, <coughs> and into Wisconsin and northeastern Minnesota. Then cold rain from the lower, lower Ohio Valley all the way across Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, up to New England. So there, is it going to be Boston? It's going to be New York probably again tomorrow, about a 70% chance. And then heavy thunderstorms, well, showers out here in Houston, then coming to uh, thunder showers in the central Gulf and then over to northern Florida and on up into Virginia. So temperature-wise, we are just looking fine. Now, this is the way October should look. Probably the temperatures in the 80s, and they're going to get cool at night now because the, the skies are clear. So we have plenty of sunshine yet tomorrow, friends, but by tomorrow night or Wednesday, look for the night morning low clouds that start to come in, increasing a little bit as the week goes along. So the coastline will be starting to cool a little bit on Wednesday, and then moving farther inland on Thursday with some slight cooling. Other than that, we should be just beautiful tomorrow. Well, I won't be good. The weather will. Be. <laughs> and that should be nice. But the night could get a little nippy now. We could get down to 52, 53, something like that, even on the coast, because it's very clear. Mm-hmm. All the heat rises. The cat hair rises. Everything goes That's up. when you sing. That's right. <laughs> Laura, Laura's recanted. She says she'll let you sing. That's right. Will? Get At 11.31, song. Bob. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> sure. There is nothing left but the cleanup tonight at Expo 86. The World Fair in Vancouver closed its gates for the last time today after a 165-day run. Closing ceremonies, those aren't them. I don't think. Okay. Uh, closing ceremonies were 60,000 cheering people who snatched up free tickets for the event. That's better. Thousands of employees marched into the arena. The U.S. and Soviet pavilion came in together. Some significance there, maybe. Expo is being called the biggest success in 16 years, more than 22 million visitors, which is much better than the 13 million predicted. And everybody I have talked to said they had a great time. Everybody who went said they had a wonderful time. And probably the toughest thing were all the time they had to stand in line. Yeah. Because there were so many people. Quite a show this hour on Sun Up San Diego. Jerry G. Bishop is still on vacation, so this week we'll have a series of guest hosts. Not today, however, as you and me folks once again. But Jerry will be here by the magic of videotape. He's taking an interview with a man named Freddie Gerson, who's an entertainment attorney, talks about the music industry in the 1960s and what it was like, sort of the razor edge of that. Um, the gift of life. There's a little boy in San Diego, who's 16 years old, who will not be receiving a hung lark a heart lung transplant that he needs because there aren't enough to go around. We'll learn about that from that boy's mother. Children are what they eat. Kara brownies is something they could turn into with Inga Holt Camp. And I'm getting a different perspective this morning. It's from high atop a beautiful quarter horse named Frit, who is, is he actually, is he considered a member of the San Diego Police Department? He's a member of the team. So is Officer Billy Bird, who's been with, uh, since, I guess, with the amount of police since it was reestablished in 82, is that right? And I was at their football game yesterday. around on the ground don't seem to get quite as much accomplished well 
when you're sitting eight foot in the air and you're moving down the street at a rather slow pace, you see a whole lot more than a police officer in a trial car does. Now, I understand they were a major part of the force in what? Hi, come on back, Fritz, for a second. Up to 1946. Up to 1946. But they started back. in what, 18... 1898. 1898. Why were they brought back? Well, it's hard to say. Uh, the city manager and our mayor, I don't know if it was the same football game, but they were at a, at a game that turned into a near riot back east somewhere. And the particular city had mounted patrol, and all of a sudden the crowd was going to spill onto the field, and the mounted officers moved in, and it stopped just like that. So crowd control is a major portion of it. Yes, ma'am. Right behind us, <laughs> we have a crowd that's willing <laughs> and able to be controlled. What would you do? Uh, can you show me or just demonstrate it and I'll just get out of the way? Uh, explain what you would do uh, with a crowd, an unruly group that's such a, as this? That's a pretty raspy bunch. <laughs> now we uh, attempt to do it with voice commands to tell the people to move and nine times out of ten they're not going to. Sometimes we get some nasty words back. But all of a sudden, if 1,400 pounds of flesh on four legs starts moving sideways towards the crowd, they move. Let's see. Okay. Would you like to demonstrate that for sure. us? Sure. Okay. All right, you rowdy bunch, you're gonna have to back up. You don't wanna go? <laughs> that works, doesn't it? <laughs> it's scary. Now, now show, can you show us that step again, what you did? You just moved sideways? Yes, yeah, it? that's called a side pass. It's, uh, it's an equestrian maneuver moving the horse on a, on a side direction. You just touch the horse on the side, and he moves. Our horses are all trained uh, in what the equestrian people call dressage but we don't call it that way. It's just all part of our mounted training. Our yes. horses move any direction we want. Now, what else could you control with the crowd? What, what else could you make them do? <laughs> go home? Well, I can go right into the middle and split them in two directions. Well, let's watch that happen. Let's okay. go back, Fritz. You and I, we'll just back out of the picture. <laughs> I think they're separated. They, they did it. Now, have you had to use this here in San Diego? Yes, ma'am, we have. You have. In what kind of situation? Was it well, a rock concert uh, or something like that? Here, let me get over here. The last time uh, we used any techniques of crowd control was at the uh, last San Diego State game. And we had two mounted officers there for that. And I guess the students got a little unhappy when there was only one gate open. Uh, for them to get in as students at the football game and it was a near riot and there were quite a few officers on the ground on foot trying to break the crowd up and they just couldn't do anything and two of our mounted officers uh, saw what was happening and they moved them to position on the sidewalk at the stadium and in a matter of seconds the sidewalk was cleared and the riot was over it's amazing it really is now, are there ever any really awfully people that are really very cruel out there who hurt the horses at all or do most people respect the fact that you're who you are sitting on top of a beautiful animal and well we're we're still police officers we're still cops to the public but almost everybody uh likes animals and they like horses especially because they're beautiful so it's like a public relations thing in some respects is it not? well <laughs> it is and it isn't. Public relations is not our primary responsibility, yeah. but it is definitely a part of the job. When uh, someone is out, a citizen of San Diego is out and sees you, is it all right to come up and chat with you and say, you know, what's the name of your horse and do you enjoy the sure. job? That's not a problem for you. That's, no that's problem quite at all. all right. Well, I think what we need to do, Officer Bird, is get these people back together. So should I just... Well, you can start on this end, and okay. I can move them down so to you. So we just need How's to bring that? them back together, okay? Fritz, okay. how about this, kid? Help me out. Come on, we got to go this way. Okay, folks, we're going that way. 